Welcome to another video by Warp9 Tech Design. In this case, we are going to show you how to use Anti-Dive Mode 1, Delay After Arc OK. First thing you want to do, once you have everything set up, is to make sure that you reference all axes. If your z-axis isn't zeroed after that point, click on zero to zero it out. Next thing we'll do is load g-code. And it would behoove us to take a look at it. This g-code also is available on our website at warp9td.com, FAQ, Mach 4, Anti-Dive Mode 1. This will demonstrate Anti-Dive Mode 1. The first thing we want to do is load all of our default settings so that we know we don't have any values from a previous run. M2020, TMC3 and 1 load default config values equal to 1. That will load it. And we want to put in a little pause right after that just to make sure the macro can run and execute before any G-code happens. In this case, the G code is going to be set to G20 units, inches, G64 for constant velocity mode. And if you haven't used constant velocity mode before, go back to our website, getting started, setting the smooth stepper in Mach 4, and look here to see how to do your constant velocity tuning. It'll walk you through all the steps but it's critical that you do it. If you are using work coordinate limits, you can do these right here, and that will put your z-axis stops in so that you won't go higher or lower than those values. The next thing we're going to do is call these two macros to enable anti-dive mode one and set it to a value of 5.1 seconds. 5.1 seconds is a lot longer than you want in reality, but it's great for testing and watching in a video. Pause for just a moment to ensure that the G code get, or this is executed by the macro before the G code is called, and then we're going to move down. Right now, I have this commented out by the two parentheses. You would want to remove those two parentheses to let the probe happen. Make sure you change those values appropriately. And that will let you touch off your material so that you can then rise 0.15 inches to your correct pierce height. Again, what's your correct pierce height? That's your material and your torch requirements, I can't tell you. But for me, I am going to have this uncommented just because I'm not running this on actual hardware. And it just lets us run easier because you'll skip that and just zero us out wherever we are in magical midair. After that, the M62P3 will be called because that will turn on our torch because the torch is assigned to output number three. This turning on will occur with the beginning of the motion of this next movement command, G1. We will make four corners or four legs of a square. After we do the four legs of a square, we will call M63, P3, and that will turn our torch off, and we'll move through the lead out of the part. Finally, we'll do a G92.1 to cancel our coordinate offsets, and we'll do an M30 to end the program. On our screen set, we can see the TMC3 and one is running. We press disable, we see stale data, negative 999, whatever. Press enable again. It goes yellow for a moment because it's communicating and connecting. Now TMC3 and 1 is running. Tip volts are okay. And we see zero tip volts like you'd normally see with your torch off. I am not using a real torch for this video. I'm using a potentiometer so I can adjust my voltage and see the full voltage range that we could deal with. If I want to turn my torch on, I can click here 
And what I do is I have my torch relay wired up to my Eric OK, so that as soon as I turn it on, my Eric OK turns on too. You don't have that in reality, but it makes it easier for the video. We have two LEDs underneath the torch right here. This first one is the ESS commanding the torch relay to turn on. The second one is the TMC3 and 1 reporting that the torch has been turned on. So that has to go down to the TMC3 and 1, and then about a tenth of a second or a quarter second later, it'll come back up to Mach 4. But it happens a lot faster in reality. It's just the reporting that is slower. And since that's activating the Eric OK signal, we see that turn on right away and turn off pretty much right away with the pressing of this button. You normally won't have to do that much because you're... M62 P3 will turn that on, and then the M63 P3 will turn that off. Right now we can see that the torch is off, but if we click here, Velocity Command Height Control is on. So this will allow the Z-axis to move up and down if the TMC3 and 1 commands it. If that's off, you're going to see stuff happening down here, but the Z-axis will not move because the Smooth Stepper will see that this is off and not allow it. So if you want Height Control to happen, turn it on. If you don't want Height Control to happen, turn it off. Rewind G-Code. So I will set it to 50 volts, which is going to be too low, and it's going to say we have to make a move to do that, or to correct that, so we can get back to our target tip voltage of 118. Okay, so we'll now press cycle start. And you can see right here that AD1 is inhibiting. We don't have any command in motion right here. The 5.1 seconds expired. And it's now saying that it's commanding a velocity up of 99 inches per minute. Height control is active. And it ends. If we run it again, we can see AD1 inhibiting. Height control is not active right here. And this one is just saying the TMC3 and 1 is saying height control is active or not. And we can see the z-axis moving at the end of this. If we run it one more time. We'll change it though so that we are above our target tip volts just a little bit. So let's make it about 125. So we should only see about half speed. Instead of 99, it should be about 50. And it will be in the opposite direction. This time it will be down. Nothing's happening, no z axis movement. And now we're going down once that 5.1 seconds happened. That's how you use anti-dive mode 1 and actually run the TMC 3-in-1.